So you getting ready to barbecue some pork ribs this weekend? Well, let me tell you, ditch that 3-2-1 method. I'm gonna show you something a lot easier. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd, uh, Sassy's over there uh, working on something. So it's just gonna be me for now. Maybe uh, I'll uh, get her to taste test uh, some of these ribs after we're done with them. But today we got a treat for you. We got one rack of back ribs, baby back ribs, and a rack of spare ribs. Now these are really good quality, uh, organic, uh, no antibiotics, uh, no preservatives. Uh, they're from Sprouts Farmers Market and they're USA sourced. They're just a really good quality pork. So Sassy picked these up. And like I mentioned at the intro, ditch that 3 2, one method. So we are gonna do this on my Traeger pellet grill and we're gonna use a standard Pit Boss uh, pellet. So let's get started on the basic seasoning and then we'll uh, get them on the smoker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my usual uh, smear binder um, and this isn't a plug for uh, French's mustard, but uh, we like using a mustard. And what I do is I just give it a nice little wiping down. Now you could use any kind of binder you want or schmear. Um, we prefer the mustard, but you know, use what works for you. You don't even have to use it if you don't want. I've just found more success. So what we got here for seasoning is this olive fusion that uh, Sassy picked up during a vacation to Breckenridge, Colorado last year. Uh, it's been sealed up and uh, haven't uh, used any yet. And we did taste it and we feel that maybe it needs a little bit more pepper. So I'm gonna be using some of our uh, coarse ground black pepper on here first. Okay, all right guys, as you can see that went on nice and thick. All right guys, so we're just gonna go ahead and let those ribs set up for about an hour. Then we're gonna go ahead and meet outside on the trigger and uh, fire it up. All right guys, so we are ready to fire up the trigger. I'm gonna be using Pit Boss pellets. Uh, it's a good general purpose pellet. Uh, there's nothing really too special about it here. To get back to the three, two, one, you know, ditch the three, two, one uh, theme that we're running with. Three hours is a good place to start with, but you know, if you're one of these guys that's counting the minutes, you know, don't do that. It's not that simple. Actually, it is simple to figure out when you need to take your ribs off. So I'll get to two things that you need to be aware of before you decide to wrap. One of them, is you gotta pass the bark test, okay? That's usually gonna come first. That's your first sign that you're well into the cook. Your bark doesn't flake off when you flick it with your fingernail. And that's the point when you start spritzing with your spritz of your choice. I'm gonna use a 50-50 mix of organic apple cider vinegar and water. And I'm gonna do that probably about every, uh, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes or something like that with, with ribs. On a brisket, I would probably go about another every half hour. So again, I'm gonna set it and forget it. I am gonna be looking at the clock, but again, I'm gonna wait until it passes the bark test before I wait for the next step. And I'm gonna let you know what that is in person and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So now guys, if you got a cold one, this is the point where you crack it open and uh, enjoy the show. two and a half hours. And as you saw, uh, we passed the bark test and I've been spritzing about every uh, 20 minutes with my apple cider vinegar water mix. And um, the temperature inside of both the ribs are right about 170 or so. Um, I don't wanna go up too much higher without wrapping here. So 
I'm going to show you my number two test for that first period that uh, I mentioned earlier. And it has to do with the way the ribs feel. Now, they're bony, you know, most ribs are going to feel bony. But it's about picking them up and having a little bit of a droop without them busting open. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this rib right here, I can hold it in the middle. It's got kind of a droop here to it, but it's not breaking, it's not falling apart, uh, and you know, it's not cracking open, but it still has a little bit of spring, but it's definitely drooping, guys. So that's what I want. Let me show you the spare ribs. A little bit more of a droop, but they're not really breaking open. Uh, actually, I'm starting to get a little bit of a crack there. Um, and these normally take longer to cook. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and wrap them. So I got some pink butcher paper laid out. And what I'm going to do is take some tallow and just kind of lay it down, smear it around right about where I'm going to put the rib. Okay. Now I've used butter in the past. Um, We've used honey. Um, we've used, whoop, we have used Dr. Pepper. We've used barbecue sauce. And, um, and it, it's really kind of up to you what you want to use. But I'm going to go ahead and use some of this tallow. And then I'm going to lay that rib right in there like that, guys. Just like that. I love the color I'm getting and it's looking beautiful. So I'm going to wrap this up and what I want to do is when I put it back on the trigger it's going to go meat side down. Okay. That's how it's uh, looking now. I rotated the spare ribs to the front and the back ribs to the back where it's a little warmer. Okay. And I'm going to increase that temperature to now 300 on the Traeger here. And the reason I'm doing that is now that they're wrapped, I can go from 225 to 300 and start finishing these off. All right, guys, uh, it's been about a half hour. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap them and put them back on the Traeger meat side up. That's going to let any kind of juices on the top kind of set so it's not so tender. And uh, I'm probably only going to do that for another half hour or so. And then I'm going to take them off and we're going to try it out. Guys, right, let's wrap this one. Oh, God, look at that towel, guys. Boy, oh boy. Okay, that's ready to fall apart. So let's get this uh, back on the trigger and the next one. Now, if I was doing a brisket, I would, I'd be unwrapping and getting ready to eat, pouring all this uh, tallow back all over the brisket. Now, you can see how delicate it could be. Okay, so you got to be very careful here. I want to show you that pull back on the bone that's looking really good all right guys as you can see uh, it's looking really nice um, they are pretty much done uh, so I'm gonna go pull them off the trigger and we'll uh, show you what we got These look beautiful and uh, they smell even better. All right, in the baby back and the spare rib. 
You know, the spare rib's got uh, more meat on it, as far as I'm concerned. Go for it, babe. Okay. Okay, you got the uh, back, back rib. Back Nice and meaty. Oh, hot. Yeah. Delicious. I like the rub. Just a hint of sweetness. Okay, I'm going in. Mmm. Okay, look at that. Excellent pull. Really meaty. And, um, you know, and the baby backs are supposed to have more meat, but, you know, in this case, these spare ribs ended up having more meat on them. What do you think of the baby back? Equally delicious. Okay, I'll try the baby back. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Pulls off the bone really good. I think the back ribs have a better flavor. They both taste good to me. Hey, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.